Shalom, this is the brother Bob, you're from the GMS Virginia camp. Before I get started, like always, I want to give all praise and glory to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah Bashem, Rechach Badash, the bonus to the other apostles of Great Millstone, the minute I learned the truth from. And Shalom, peace and blessings goes out to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, sincerely waiting and enduring until the return of Yahweh Shah Mashiach to deliver us out of this last captivity. <clears throat> yeah, the image you see on the screen is a uh, um, depiction of the layout of the tabernacle that Moses got from the Mosai to build for the nation of Israel. And when you deal with this first tabernacle um, that Moses built, it pretty much sums up that salvation is only for um, the nation of Israel and not for all nations. Um, you got to understand when you read the Bible, which these Christians totally disregard, it's a relationship between the Mosai, who the world calls God, whose, whose Hebrew name is Yehovah, and his chosen nation, his chosen people, the Israelites, all right, Yahshua Allah in the Hebrew, all right, and he, he gave this uh, image, this vision to Moses of this tabernacle, which is a tabernacle that is in the, which is in the third heaven where the Most High dwells, to build this for the nation of Israel because it represents his relationship with his people, all right, the whole, I mean, you even got to understand, it. before they even built this tabernacle, he destroyed their enemies. He plagued their enemies before he ultimately destroyed them and put them to death. He plagued them, all right? The ancient Egyptians. He plagued them and destroyed them before he before he set his people free and to allow them to build this tabernacle. The scriptures tell you he even hardened Pharaoh's heart so that he could work on Pharaoh for his purpose, all right? <clears throat> he was basically torturing the, the enemies that enslaved his chosen people. Okay, let me get a Deuteronomy 14, real quick. This is Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 2. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy power, and the Lord have chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself above all the nations that are upon the earth. All right, and the book of Malachi tells us that the Lord changes not. So he took a nation, which is the, which is the nation of Israel, Yahshua Allah, to be a special people, a peculiar people above all nations that are upon the earth. And he set up this tabernacle here. And as you can see, this camp, you have the tribes of the north, which was Dan, Asher, Naphtali, of the west, Benjamin, Manasseh, um, Ephraim, uh, the east, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, um, of the south, Gad, Simeon, and Reuben, right? Now, you're not going to see any Moabite tribes. You're not going to see any Edomite tribes. You're not going to see any Hamite tribes. Shit, I mean, shit, you read the Old Testament, we was warned with the Canaanites, the Hamite nations, over and over and over again, right? The, the, the Lord wasn't dealing with the mother nations. This is a, the Bible is a story in a in a record book, right? A history book, really, is just a record book, a compiled record book of the of the history of the nation of Yashallah and the relationship between their power. Now, when you look at this, the camp that they pitched through the charge of Moses, all right, the man that the Lord had set up to lead the nation which under him he had set up men to lead. And under them they had set up men. For all you niggas out there that don't think that you got to listen to men, all right? The most I don't come off his throne and come deal with you personally. He sets up men on the earth that you follow. But anyways, as you can clearly see, what you had uh, amongst the camp was the tabernacle. But within that tabernacle, um, the Levitical priest was set up to what? Make intercession for the nation of Israel, all right? But when they would sin, um... The Levitical priests would um, make intercession for the nation, all right? Um, let me get a precept for what I'm talking about. Let me go to Genesis, the 26th chapter. Um, Genesis, the 26th chapter. And this is, um, you know, talking about when he was building the tabernacle. I'm going to read verse 1 and then I'm going to drop down. It, this is... Uh, that's in Genesis, Salakia, um, Exodus chapter 26, Salakia. This is Exodus chapter 26, verse 1. Moreover, thou shalt make the tabernacle with ten curtains of fine twine linen and blue and purple and scarlet with cherubims of cunning work shall thou make them, right? So I just wanted to get that first verse so you know that it's talking about, you know, the building of the tabernacle. Now let's drop all the way down in Exodus chapter 26 to verse, let me see, uh, Let's drop all the way down to verse, um, let's see, 
spare me one moment. Oh, um, matter, matter of fact, let me go to um chapter twenty seven. Uh, and let me um in chapter twenty seven, let me go all the way down to the last verse in twenty one. It says, "In the tabernacle of the con of the congregation, without the veil, which is before the testimony, Aaron and his sons shall order it." From evening to morning before the Lord. Okay, the the, the lineage of the Levitical priesthood was put in charge of the intercession for the nation of Israel. It shall be a statute forever unto the unto their generations on the behalf of the children of Israel. Right now, why did I bring that out? Because Aaron and his or uh, Moses and the Levitical priesthood, the, the lineage of the Levites, was put in charge of um making intercession on behalf of the children of Israel for all their generations. So this tabernacle, it was nothing but a foreshadowing for a foreshadow for what was to come. All right, you go into uh, King David's temple. He built his temple based off of the first tabernacle that Moses built. King Solomon built his temple the same way. All right. You got a whole you got the um the holy place of holy. You got the holy of holies. All right. You got the Ark of the Covenant. All right, even in the outer court before you got to the holy place, all right, you had to um, wash your hands, the place where the Levitical priests would have to wash their hands before they entered into the holy place or they would die, all right? And outside of that, you had the actual altar where you would slaughter the lamb, but it was all on behalf of um, Israel, Yahshua, not all nations, all right? So from there, um, let's, let's go to um, Exodus chapter 28. Uh, and it says, this is talking about the garment. He told Aaron to make a garment. It says, um, and thou shalt make holy garments for Aaron thy brother for glory and for beauty. Right? And what is this talking about? The Levitical, um, the Levitical priesthood garment. Okay? Now, let me go down to a point that I want to get because it's talking about the whole setup with the breastplate, the stones and all that. So let's go down to what I want. Because even the garment tells you who it was for. Um, let me see. Bear with me one second. <laughs> okay, yeah, I found the verse that I want. Um, it's in the breastplate. This is... um. Exodus chapter, what is it, 27, right? No, 28. 28 and verse, um, 28 and verse um, 29. It says, And Aaron shall bear the names of the children of Israel in the, bless, in the breastplate of judgment upon his heart. Let me read that again. And Aaron shall bear the names of the children of Israel in the breastplate of judgment upon his heart when he goeth into the holy place. For a memorial before the Lord continually. So when he went, before he went into the holy place, he had to have a breastplate with stones up there, right? The ephod, which, which he was girded with the ephod, but it bared the names of the children of Israel. It didn't bear the names of the children of Moab. It didn't bear the names of the children of Esau. It didn't bear the names of the children of Japheth, all right? Let me go to verse 21 in Exodus um, chapter 28. It says, And the stones shall be with the names of the children of Israel, Twelve according to their names, like the engravings of a signet, everyone with with his name shall 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 they be according to the twelve tribes, not according to all nations. This is a foreshadowing. The tabernacle is number the foreshadowing of the kingdom to come. That's why when you go to the Rev, um the book of Revelation, um, let me see if I can get that real quick. Uh, it, it tells you about um. Let me see. Da, 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 da. Yep, the Revelation twenty one and twelve. It says, and had a great and high, and had a wall. Let me read that again. This is Revelation chapter twenty one. Is Re Revelation chapter twenty one verse twelve? So okay. And had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the and at the gates twelve angels and names written thereupon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. On, on the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and in the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. Why did it have three gates on the east, 
three on the north, three on the south, and three on the west. When when you look at how the tabernacle was built, that's how that's what it was. So when you even go to the kingdom of heaven, the way the kingdom of heaven is going to be built with those 12 gates, it represents the tabernacle that the Most High gave to Moses to build. Same way that none of you nations could come and deal with that tabernacle is the same way you can't deal with the 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 the, the um the, the kingdom of heaven as far as um receiving the blessing because you won't you weren't chosen to be the nation in which the Lord um blessed to rule over the earth. All right? With with his son, with his son at, at charge of all that, okay? So um let me let me get a, another scripture real quick here to because um, I, I brought out how in the breastplate was the names of the children of Israel, right? This is Wisdom of Solomon, um, chapter 18, verse 24. For in the long garment, what, what garment? The garment of the Levitical priest. It says, for in the long garment was the whole world, and in the four rows of the stones was the glory of the Father's graven and the majesty upon the diadem of his head. So the whole world, when the Lord speaks about in John three sixteen. He he for he for for he loved his, the whole world. He gave his only begotten son. That's talking about the world of Israel. Because when you go to, let me get that Isaiah. What is that Isaiah? Uh, Isaiah the um forty fifth chapter, I believe. Bear with me one second. Uh, let me see. Yeah, this is Isaiah chapter forty five verse seventeen. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. All nations, no. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with the everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed, nor confounded, world without end. So, you know, when you look at this 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 this, this, this tabernacle, it's, show, it's it's telling you. That's why these Christians they don't they like to disregard the Old Testament when really the Old Testament is showing you, all right, what the new what what you call the New Testament, which was just a culmination and fulfillment of what was established from the beginning. With Yahweh Shah being at forefront because instead of the Levitical priests being the intercession for the nation of Israel, now Yahweh Shah, who was known as Melchizedek, Malak Tazadak, the king of righteousness, the high priest, he's the intercession for the nation of Israel because Israel, according to that old covenant, they did not know, you know, what the what it really meant. With, with their relationship between their most high because they would take advantage of that, all right? They would have a lamb already ready and then they would, would commit the sin and then go sacrifice the lamb knowing they was already going to commit the sin. It was going off, but the Lord had already chose them and since he was bound by his word, he gave them an intercessor, but this time not by the, not by man's hands, but through his son, his only begotten son, all right? That's why when the Lord died, uh, scriptures tell us that the veil in the temple had, had, had rent, all right? Why? Because there's no need um, for the Levitical priests anymore. There's no need to actually have the temple no more. Because now the temple is the um, elect men of the nation of Israel. That's why when you go to the book of Revelation and you read about the 12,000 men out of each tribe, which are the um, 144,000 elect men of the nation of Israel, which are going to be that government body. That's the body he's dealing with. That's the temple now. Those men right there, that's the temple of the Lord. Okay? Now, let me... Um, let me go to uh, the book of Hebrews where it talks about um, Melchizedek. Um, what is that? Uh, and bear with me for a second because this is this is all through spirit. Um, Hebrews 7. Uh, let me see. Let me see what I want to get though. Yeah, let me, okay, this is um, Hebrews chapter 7, verse 11. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what, for, what further need was there another priest should arise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? For the priesthood being changed, there is made, there is made of a necessity a change also of the law. Right? Oh, for he of whom these things are spoken pertaineth to another tribe of which no man gave attendance at the altar. That's how you know it's talking about our Lord, Yahweh Shah, being Melchizedek. Because verse, verse 14, for it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. So that high priest is the, the, the son of the Most High, which gave his life for, for the nation of Israel. Okay, now 
Um, let me wrap this up with Amos. And, and when you go into the tabernacle, this is a very deep topic. Like this, you can really get into the meat of this whole thing with the tabernacle and the temple and the relationship between um Yasha Allah and their power Yahweh and their Savior Yahweh Shah. You can go on and on with this, but um I didn't want to make this too long. Um, but Amos chapter Amos chapter nine. Let me see. Because when you when you focus on that tabernacle, it, it, it just basically sums up everything that's going to come after. All right, You read about the wars that the children of Israel had to fight. You read about the battles they had to go through. You read about the captivities they went in. It's all just a, a, a history and a record book of what the Israelites had to go through and a relationship between them and their power. This is Amos chapter 9, and I'm going to read verse um, 11. In in that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen. And David wrote and David built his tabernacle, his army, his temple based off what Moses received. All right, that's why the scriptures tell you he has set up garrisons in Edom. All right, let me get that real quick because it's about to speak about Edom in, in the next verse. Um, where's that at? Bear with me one second. Uh, one minute. Let me see. Uh, yeah, this is Second Samuel chapter eight, verse fourteen. This is talking about David. It says, "And and he put garrisons in Edom. Through all Edom put he put he garrisons, and all they of Edom became David's servants. And the Lord preserved David wheresoever he went. So the Lord is going to raise up that tabernacle of David, right? So it says, verse eleven, Amos chapter nine, verse eleven. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that David that is fallen, and close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up his ruins." And I will build it as in the days of old, that they may possess the remnant of Edom, see, <laughs> and all the heathen, some of them, and all the heathen, which are called by my name, save the Lord, that do of this. All right. So this is what the Lord going to do. He going to set up that tabernacle again based off what he gave Moses. All right. And when you read about the kingdom of heaven in the book of Revelation, that's what it is. All right. The culmination, the, the, the sealing up. Of the relationship of of uh, Yahshua Allah and their power Yahweh and their, their deliverer Yahweh Shai. So, like I said, I didn't want to make this too long. Um, shoot, I may make another video dealing with this topic on another time. But I hope the I hope the elect was edified. To next time, I say Shalom.